Hello, welcome to a chapter about coal reactivity. I wanted to get this in before we got too far along with the combustion process because different coals have different ability to light on fire and burn. And it correlates quite well with rank. So uh, as we look at the chemistry of coals or we look at different measurements of reactivity, we're gonna see that a lot of times those same measurements are indicating a rank of a coal. In other words, anthracite, bituminous, subbituminous, lignite, that type of information comes from the same information that we're gonna look at to look at reactivity. There'll be five areas we'll be looking at. The volatile matter, the fuel ratio, the oxygen content, and moisture ash free BTU We'll be looking at carbon to hydrogen ratios and other ratios, and then we'll look at the Hargrove grindability influence on some coals. We'll start with the volatile matter. And I typically describe the volatile matter as being like the lighter fluid on charcoal grill, where you're gonna grill some chicken or some shrimp or fish. You're gonna have your charcoal, and then to get that charcoal lit, you would put some lighter fluid on it some organic liquid type material that's flammable. You soak the charcoal in there and then it's easier to light. So the volatile matter in coal is like that lighter fluid. The more lighter fluid or the more liquid uh, flammable material that you put on the coal, the easier it is to light. When we just go measure the volatile, which is basically the weight percent of stuff that boils off when you don't give it oxygen, so we're not burning the coal, we're just boiling off the materials that come off at a cherry red temperature. So now we have that material, and if you have low amounts of that material, as it turns out, the coal is hard to light off. It doesn't mean it won't burn. Like once you get that charcoal lighter fluid to burn off, your charcoal will be glowing and it will be burning, but it won't be making smoke. A lot of times volatiles are associated with smoky flames. If you have a fuel rich situation with high volatile coals, there's a good chance that you're gonna get like a sooty or black type smoke. Because the volatile matter goes up as the rank goes down and the calorific value goes down as the rank goes down, if I divide the weight percent of volatile by the calorific value with a 10,000 factor, uh, I will get the loading values or the pounds of volatile per million BTUs or the kilograms of volatile per million kilocalories, it sort of widens out the band. So if I've got some coals that are a little bit close, if I look at the loading level of the volatile, I will get a, a better separation of the differences in the coals. And please keep in mind that ASTM uses the volatile or the corresponding fixed carbon content of coals like low volatile bituminous and anthracites to distinguish between the two. So this is definitely the volatile matter being used to rank coals. Now, a very high rank bituminous or anthracite type coal, when we look at the chemistry of the volatile matter, we'll see that it's mostly hydrogen and carbon. It's a hydrocarbon, very little oxygen involved. But if we look at the volatile matter of like a subbituminous or lignite coal, we'll see things like carbon monoxide in the volatile matter or phenols versus benzene in the aromatic rings, we'll actually see a more oxygenated volatile matter. This oxygen content in the volatile matter adds to the weight of the volatile. It doesn't necessarily add calorific value to the volatile matter. One of the things we did when studying the combustion of low volatile coals is we would actually calculate the calorific value of the volatile. We do this by measuring the calorific value of the fixed carbon or the material that remains after the volatile test and then manipulate so you get on the same basis. You can look at the remaining calorific value that's missing and those are the BTUs or kilocalories that are in the volatile matter. And the last aspect is again, if we looked at the volatile matter on a loading basis, pounds per million BTUs or kilograms per millions of kilocalories, or the mass divided by the calorific value. Essentially looking at it on that way, we can actually separate and look at the volatile content that the boiler sees. One of the ways that boiler designers, boiler manufacturers 
low NOx burner manufacturers and low NOx people, one of the ways they look at coal reactivity is to look at what they call is the fuel ratio. So that's equal to the fixed carbon divided by the volatile matter. And of course you understand that as volatile matter goes up, fixed carbon comes down. So again, you get a compounding uh, impact on that. But I want you to keep in mind that remember the volatile matter is weight percent base and then the fixed carbon is also weight percent base, but it's calculated by difference. And so it's a very inaccurate number because it has the sum of the errors involved in the measurement of volatile moisture and ash. And that could be two or three or four percent, those errors. And so keep in mind that the fixed carbon value can have some error associated with it. It's not as strong a number as the direct measurement of volatile. Because the fuel ratio is the fixed carbon divided by the volatile, they are each measured in percent and the percents cancel out. So the fuel ratio is just a value, usually around one or two, but it's just a value with no units. So it's hard to utilize. When we used the pounds per million BTUs of volatile matter, I can look directly how many pounds of volatile are going into a boiler at, at any given uh, loading. And just as a side note, it's the low values of fuel ratio that indicate more reactive uh, coals. So if you want to create confusion, tell people that one is more than one and a half. And unfortunately, that's what you have to do with the fuel ratio. Looking at the oxygen content from the ultimate analysis, uh, we see that the original woody material or plant material is very high in oxygen, and then a slow decrease in oxygen from the lignites of the subbituminous. We get down to the bituminous, maybe they only have like 10% oxygen, down into the low volatile and anthracite coals that might only have 1% or 2% oxygen. So we see a, a, a correlation between the oxygen concentration uh, going down as we go higher in rank, and then we see the corresponding carbon value going up. So again, we see a sort of a correlation that as carbon goes up, generally the oxygen is going to be going down. If I look at the oxygen concentration in a coal and it's high, I'm going to think that that's a more reactive coal. One of the ways that another scientist told me to think about it, that if I'm showing a coal that has 20% moisture ash free oxygen in it, and air is 21% oxygen, that coal actually has its own air associated with it. So when you see moisture ash free values of oxygen in 20, 30% range, this is one of the issues we have with these coals. They essentially contain their own oxygen. They don't need a lot of outside air to self heat. Again, the oxygen content from the laboratory is a weight percentage basis. It's not correlated to the calorific value. That's what the loading does, so we'll be sure to take a look at that. It also is calculated by difference. And so like fixed carbon, having the sum of the airs, now the oxygen value have, has the sum of the airs of the moisture rash, sulfur, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. It has the airs of all those measurements. So again, the oxygen value can be variable due to errors associated with the measurement of the other elements. And again, just like volatile matter, uh, the oxygen value goes up as the calorific value goes down. In fact, one of the ways to take a little closer look at what the oxygen impact is on a, on a coal is to look at the moisture ash-free calorific value. Bituminous coals have high MAF because there's very little oxygen. And then if we look at the MAF, MAF BTUs per pound or kilocalories per kilogram, when we look at that, we'll see that as the oxygen concentration goes up, the calorific value goes down. So just looking at the part that burns, the calorific value of the black part that burns, not the dilution by the ash and moisture, it's a MAF or DAF basis, we can see as the BTUs go down, that's probably being caused by higher oxygen concentrations. There are some papers out there, I remember Bob Hensel's paper talking about coal combustion, where they use a lot of different ratios, carbon to hydrogen ratios, carbon div divided by oxygen plus hydrogen ratios. These sort of ratios, if you think of the hydrogen sort of being in the volatile and the carbon being in the fixed carbon, these sort of ratios tend to follow the fixed carbon divided by volatile ratios. So they're not exactly the same and there are some differences. 
If you're having a hard time sorting out which coal is more reactive or which coal might be causing spontaneous combustion problems or something like that, it might be worthwhile to look at these. But generally, the volatile loading and the oxygen loadings is enough to actually pinpoint differences in the reactivity. I mentioned Hardgrove Grindability Index because one of the features of soft or easy to grind coals is you can grind the particle up smaller. If you can grind that particle up smaller, you affect the combustion efficiency or you impact the reactivity of the coal or the burnout time of that char. And so if you have a 70 or 80 or a 90 HGI, you can actually pulverize that coal probably down to the 80% or 85% passing the 200 mesh without making a lot of adjustments on the pulverizer, it just naturally falls apart. It just so happens that the low volatile and medium volatile coals are the ones that have those high grindability indexes. So that's how when you see a power plant utilizing a medium or low volatile coal, they're able to do it by the finer grinding of the coal because the coal itself is actually lower in reactivity than most of the lower rank bituminous or subbituminous type coals. Petroleum cokes are always low volatile, and there's two basic types of petroleum coke. A sponge coke, which is a little bit more crunchy and can grind up and might have a hard growth grindability uh, in the 40s or 50s. And then we have this shot coke, which is little round balls or big round balls. The shot coke is actually maybe have grinds in the 30s. And so even though they have the same or potentially similar volatile matter characteristics, it's harder to use that shot coke because the HGI is tougher, and so it's harder to grind it to the smaller particles that a low volatile material would need. So thanks, I just wanted to fit this chapter in because it's another way to utilize the proximate and ultimate analysis to help sort out which is the more reactive coal, which is the coal that's gonna be easier to burn, potentially having lower LOI or lower unburnt carbon in the ash, which is the coal that might be posed with spontaneous combustion issues. All these are correlated to the reactivity of the coal.